Hello. On behalf of the Bracken family, we are honored that you are able to spend today with us to celebrate the life of Thomas Bracken. The peace of Christ be with you. We've gathered here today to virtually celebrate the life of our dear brother Thomas Bracken, one of God's fearless sons. You have the order of service and uh, we will follow. We will begin with the reading of scripture and these are Tom's uh, favorite passages of scripture uh, from the Old Testament. We're reading from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Amen. And then, out of the, the New Testament, we have the gospel recorded by John. Chapter 8, verse 32, which reads, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then also in the, in the New Testament we have, out of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we come before your presence today, first of all, to acknowledge you as our God, the true and living God, the creator of heaven and earth, the ruler and the preserver of our lives, the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for the gift and life of your son, Thomas Bracken. We thank you that you allowed him to be a blessing to so many people. And now that you have chosen to take him back to yourself, we know to be absent from the body is to be present with you. We pray now that as the God of all comfort, you would comfort Andrea and the rest of the family today and in the days, months, and years to come. We pray that you would manifest your presence in our midst and that all that we say and do will please you and it will glorify you and edify those who are a part of this celebration. Through Christ we pray. Amen. We will now listen to one of my father's favorite songs.
Robinson will now read the obituary. Please follow along. Good afternoon to the pastor, clergy, and worship family of St. Paul's Presbyterian Church. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Judith Jones Robinson, and it is an honor and great privilege for me to be asked to participate in the celebration of life and the homegoing of my brother-in-law, Thomas Lewis Bracken, Jr. Thomas Lewis Bracken, Jr., affectionately known as Tommy, was born on March 13, 1937, to Thomas Lewis Bracken, Sr. and Renoid Bracken in Paducah, Kentucky. While Thomas was young, the family moved to Saginaw, Michigan, and later to Indianapolis, Indiana. Thomas attended Emmerich Manual High School and was a member of the Reserve Officer Training Corps, ROTC, program. Upon graduation, Thomas worked at the Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Company. Thereafter, he enlisted in the United States Air Force. Thomas spent most of his tour of duty on the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. There, he operated and maintained the distant early warning line, known as the Dew Line. His task was to utilize the dew line to detect incoming Soviet bombers and prevent any sea and land invasions. Thomas was honorably discharged from the Air Force as an airman first class. Subsequently, he used his military experience to obtain employment at the Bell Telephone Company in Los Angeles. He was a diligent employee and quickly rose to the leadership position of supervisor. Thomas met the love of his life, Michelle Andrea Ayers, at a New Year's Eve party given by a mutual friend. On that special night, he proposed to Andrea before the bells rang in the new year. She laughed and said, no. But three months later, Andrea smiled big and said, yes. The young couple married at the Church of Religious Science. The newlyweds bought a home in Baldwin Hills, and thereafter, Michael Anthony was born. When David Elijah came along, their little family was complete. A few years later, the Bracken family became a part of the St. Paul's Presbyterian Church community. The boys attended the preschool and Tommy took them to Sunday school every Sunday. Tommy and Andrea became faithful attendees of the church worship services and were members of various committees. Tommy was a loving husband and father. He enjoyed taking the family on adventures and exploring the country on fun-filled road trips. He was proud of his sons and relished that they grew to be strong, intelligent, God-centered men. In 1984, Tommy heeded the Lord's calling to teach the Bible. He taught and gave away the one-year Bible everywhere he went, at work, at the poker table, and even at church. His gift of gab, his mischievous sense of humor, and his deep love for all of God's children made him ideal for this ministry. Tommy taught Sunday school and adult Bible study at the church and at his home. He was known for his generosity and his willingness to help anyone in need. After taking an early retirement from Pacific Bell, Tommy kept busy. His pastimes were playing poker and spreading the word. Tommy was instrumental, instrumental 
in starting the weekly church prayer meetings, and he organized the food giveaway program at St. Paul. Furthermore, he expanded his Bible study program by developing the Bible study website, which remains active today. Tommy and Andrea were blessed with three grandchildren, Leah Mylin, Aria Michelle, and Elijah Grayson. Tommy loved and enjoyed his grandchildren, but after his stroke, he was no longer able to play with them or shop for them as he had done. In his later years, Tommy developed vascular dementia, which was stroke-induced. However, he never lost his love for the Lord and never forgot who his family and caregivers were. Tommy was able to achieve his long-standing wish to live out his last days at home with his family until God called him home. On December 12, 2020, at 9.05 a.m., Thomas Lewis Bracken Jr. peacefully slept away. Tommy leaves to cherish his memory, his loving wife, Andrea, sons, Michael and David, and Kedra, his daughter-in-law, grandchildren, Leah, Aria, and Elijah, mother-in-law, Doris Ayers, caregivers, Mombasa Jones, Brandon Webb, and Jeremiah McNair, and a host of relatives, church members, neighbors, and friends.
now we'll have some expressions of love from some people who knew Tommy well. We also encourage you to remain after the service is over so that you can express your love, memories, and acknowledgments to the family once we end the service. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sharon Crittenden, a member of St. Paul's Presbyterian Church. I've been a member here since 1995. And when I first came, the first person who talked to me and was friendly to me when I used to attend Pastor Feniel's Bible studies was Tommy Bracken. He would talk to me all the time. We would discuss the Bible. We would disagree on it and argue. But what it helped me to do by talking to him about the Word was it helped me to get stronger in my faith and in knowing the knowledge of the Word of the Bible. Um, one thing people don't know about Tommy, Tommy would give you the shirt off his back if he could. He may disagree or argue with you, but he sure would still share and give you whatever he had. One time, Mr. Lee, Mr. Seinfeld Jones, and um, Mr. Uh, Triplet were trying to find out how we could get new chairs for the church. We needed two chairs. I brought them magazines showing them how to order and buy them where I bought mine for the city from and they said okay they gave me a lot of money to buy a lot of chairs I think it was either 15 or 20 chairs no one was helping me the first person who stepped up to the plate to help me to go get all the chairs and bring them back from San Pedro was Tommy Bracken and I've never forgotten that he stood by me and helped me and it took us about two hours but we did a good job and we argued all the way there about the word but I felt very comfortable and at home and the chair I'm sitting in now, a few years ago, there's an event that I go to all the time, uh, a tennis event out at Indian Wells. I go every year for two or three days. I love tennis. And they stopped giving us wheelchairs. And so one day I asked Andrea if it would be okay to borrow Tommy's uh, wheel walker. And she said we had to talk to him. And he, they said, Tommy, Sharon wants to borrow it. He said, give it to her. So since then I've had it and it's been very good for me to get around, to sit down when I get tired and it's helped me quite a bit and that's a great memory I'll keep with me all the days of my life because he did not have to offer it to me. It's a great chair. That's the thing I want to say about Tommy Bracken and how much he meant to me and how it was a wonderful time talking to him and sharing different topics about movies and the word with him. So I just wanted to say to the Bracken family, may you continue his legacy to still be as kind and nice like you all are, uh, like he was, and to keep the love in your heart of Tommy Bracken. God be with you all. My name is Vicki Miller. I am from St. Paul Presbyterian as a visitor. Mr. Brackens and Mrs. Brackens, beautiful loving family, two sons and two beautiful beautiful sons. Um, they, we had Bible study right here in the house and it was beautiful and everybody got together and my favorite one was Psalms 23, the Lord's Shepherd. And at the church, St. Paul Presbyterian, the church that I visit, we got together on the Ursha board. We prayed and uh, we talked things over and if things weren't right, we just you know, and got together. What we didn't didn't do, it shouldn't do on the Ursha board. But everything fall right in place as we walk down the aisle and greet the people. And it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, Sundays and rest of the days when we, when we did Urshers on the Ursha board. One, he has a sparking personality. Two, he show a lot of love. Three, he network research and he help out others. And five and six, he would speak the truth, and, and uh, he would tell like this about, he had, you know, how people should get along and not fight and show love. A very beautiful person. Yeah. Thank you. Greetings and heartfelt condolences from our home to yours. Thank you so much for allowing us to be on platform to bring closure to a life well lived. We have known your family for the past 28 years since we moved into this neighborhood. Mr. Brackens has always been friendly and engaging. 
And what really touched my heart, he was never ashamed to carry his Bible or defend the word of the gospel. We salute you all as a family for the care that you have given your father. You have shown us how to be family, not just in good times, but when there's needs. Michelle, you've never wavered. You've always sought resolve for any task at hand. David, you've been there to launch that lift every time he needed an appointment. And Michael, you've been there physically, emotionally, and tangibly to support and give a hand whenever needed. Michelle, David, and Michael, our heartfelt condolences to all of you. Your dad was quite an influential person for Christ. He encouraged me quite a bit while he was alive, and I'm, as I'm sure that he encouraged a lot of people. He was a great man of God. He will surely be missed. We are praying for your strength during this time and going forward. And David and Michael, I have no question in my mind that you will be there for your mom. You carry on the touch of your father, and God be with you, and God bless you. Dad's memories will live forever. Whenever I eat nuts, I will remember your dad. He loved eating nuts. I just want to take a moment and uh, thank the family. It's an honor to be able to talk about uh, Mr. Thomas Bracken and uh, appreciate him and what he's been in my life. You know, it's like a second dad. He's known me since I was born. And Mr. Bracken was always, you know, very patient with me. And uh, I was talking to David a little while ago, reminiscing off of him, you know, debating the word with me and, you know, and just him being an example in my life, I definitely appreciate it. He'll definitely be missed. Uh, and uh, I love the fact that him and my father, you know, Dr. Dickey, are, were friends. And, of course, he and David are, are friends. And St. Paul's and just all the great memories and that we had with uh, Mr. Bracken. And uh, I just appreciate it. And uh, he'll be sorely missed. And... Um, uh, it was just a it was just a pleasure knowing him and it just I just have so much appreciation for him in my life and uh again he'll be missed so um my prayers go out to the Bracken family mama Bracken Michael and the rest i just um I'm just gonna miss him you know miss the fact that he's here he, i mean that he's not here anymore so yeah, so God bless. Uh, we love you, Mr. Bracken. Just appreciate everything you brought to the table. God bless. Sunday school classes were a huge part of my childhood and early teen years at St. Paul's. As a child, it was just fun going to one of the classrooms and seeing friends before going into the sanctuary for church. In my early teens, Sunday school became more focused on the Bible lesson and more reflective of the scripture we were reading. I had graduated to the Sunday school class for the older kids and Tom Bracken was our Sunday school teacher. While I am certain Mr. Bracken had his own strong interpretation of our Bible lessons, he never insisted that we see it from his perspective. Instead, he encouraged open discussion and debate of the scripture reading, only reigning in the dialogue to ensure we had captured the theme of that week's lesson. Although I was now with the older kids, I was still one of the young ones in class. Mr. Bracken always nudged me to speak up and offer my thoughts. He wouldn't allow me to just, to just sit quiet or to be intimidated because I was younger. Mr. Bracken and I would often talk after class was over digging deeper into that day's lesson. I have fond memories of those discussions interpreting scripture. First Peter chapter four, verse 10 reads, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. One of Mr. Bracken's gifts was instruction and his ministry was teaching the word. I can recall Mr. Bracken sitting in Fellowship Hall, discussing the scripture with whomever would engage with him, 
church member or visitor. For me personally, his instruction in Sunday school certainly played a role in not only my spiritual growth, but in my confidence to analyze material and offer my views. Tom Bracken was a good steward of this gift of instruction and used it to serve others. Rest in peace, Mr. Bracken. This is Joyce Dixon, Deacon Elder Joyce Dixon from St. Paul's Presbyterian Church speaking on behalf of the church. To Andrea, Michael, David, Kidra, and all the Bracken grandchildren, and for all the people who love Tom, we are so very sorry for your and our loss. We at St. Paul's knew Tom Bracken, Bracken to be a faithful worshiper. Every Sunday, Tom could be found in St. Paul's sanctuary, ready for Sunday worship service. During the quiet time before church service began, Tom liked to visit the kneeling pews in the front rows of the sanctuary. Tom actually kneeled there as he spent his quiet time communing with God. However, that was before age and arthritis prevented him from continuing to do so. Several years ago, during the church's sanctuary renovation, a decision had to be made regarding how more room was going to be made in, front, in the front part of the sanctuary. One thing had to be assured. There had to be at least one kneeling pew left for Tom. But Tom didn't consider the time he spent attending the worship service as his only thing that he was expected to do for God. Tom couldn't just be a pew sitter or a bench kneeler. He actually went out and did the work of the Lord. The book of Matthew describes those who labor or work for God as laborers in the Lord's vineyard. Tom Bracken was one of those laborers. He labored diligently in God's vineyard. Tom actually considered it a privilege to participate in the work of building God's kingdom on earth by evangelizing the lost and discipling believers, which Matthew 25 directs Christians to do. Tom believed that he had been called to teach God's word. For many years, Tom was a faithfully dedicated Sunday school teacher. Many St. Paul's young people who benefited from Tom's religious tutelage have expressed their gratitude for that experience. Tom also led a Bible study, which first began at the church. When Tom moved his Bible study to his home, his devoted participants followed Tom up the hill and up those steep winding steps right into the Bracken home to continue their study. Tom also had a Friday night prayer service at St. Paul's where a small group of participants gathered to pray with and for one another. The 1992 Los Angeles civil unrest caused a food shortage in the Crenshaw area when many supermarkets, convenience stores, and restaurants were burned out, looted, or badly damaged. St. Paul's became a food distri distribution center, and Tom was in charge of St. Paul's food distribution. While packing food for distribution, Tom slipped relevant Bible passages and messages of hope inside food packages. Tom believed that in order to be a good Christian, you needed to know the word, to know God's truth so that we live our lives to honor and please him. Tom didn't want people to just read the Bible or use it to look up things when you needed them, but he wanted us to read the whole Bible from cover to cover. Tom was a generous man, generous with his time and earnings. So Tom purchased and gave away an abundance of one-year Bibles. By reading excerpts of the Old and New Testament daily, 
readers of this one-year Bible were able to read the whole Bible in 365 days. Tom gave pocket-sized electronic digital Bibles to St. Paul's Sunday school teachers and church workers so that we would always have a Bible at hand in our back pocket, backpack, or purse. Tom has given us all a gift, a Bible study website designed to encourage us all to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Just go to Bible reading, that's Bible reading, one word, dot my site, one word, dot com. That's Bible reading, dot my site, dot com. Tom performed his duties diligently with zealous persistence. He just couldn't stop working. It finally took a severe and extended illness to halt his work. But Tom didn't actually stop working. He was just resting, getting ready for his next big job. The Bible suggests that those who are faithful with their gifts and talents on earth will be rewarded with over by overseeing the cities in the coming kingdom. So Tom's up there. He's checking in with God, asking, what do you want me to do next, Lord? One of Tom's favorite songs declares, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Tom Bracken let his light shine brightly here on earth, and I'm sure it's shining brightly up there in heaven. The next time you gaze into a starry night and look, into, look upon the brightest star shining in the sky, think about Tom and his light shining brightly in God's kingdom. Tom Bracken was a good soldier for Jesus Christ. I'm sure that Tom has won God's wholehearted approval. And I'm sure that God has said unto Tom, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you. I'm the Reverend Matthew B. George. This is my tribute to Brother Tom Bracken. Friends, we are here this afternoon to give witness to the resurrection of Jesus and to say farewell to our brother and friend, Tom Bracken. Tom loved the Lord. He openly demonstrated that in everything he did. He served in season and out of season. Despite his limitation in walking, he kept all appointments to either teach or counsel members of the community. Let me start off by expressing my sympathy to Mrs. Andrea Bracken, David, Michael, his daughter-in-law, three grandchildren, and extended family members. I want to assure you that the pain and sorrow of parting will get less as time goes by. God will use you someday to bring comfort to others. You will sit with them and assure them that things will get better. Tom was loyal to the trust. He made use of the opportunity of being born and raised in this country. He was blessed with achieving wisdom knowledge and a good education which he passed to his children and those he came in contact. Tom has surely done his part. He has surely fought a good fight and has gone home to God who gave him to his family and the community of faith. He has gone to give an account of his stewardship. He has gone to receive the crown which was prepared specially for him. Tom willingly made use of his time, talents, and resources to help those he knew as well as those he did not know. Tom willingly took time to teach the scriptures to members of the community 
and also provided counseling. He also took time to motivate and encourage others. I remember his words of encouragement, which he always gave me when I was in seminary. I say to you, don't be worried or upset. Don't be afraid. Tom Bracken, whom we all love, is in the loving hands of God. Death has passed. All struggles, pain and sickness are no more. To Andrea, the children, grandchildren, and other extended family members, if your name is called today, or better still, if the Good Shepherd should come and knock at your heart's door, are you ready to answer the call? Have you taken time to pass on some of the blessings which God has given to you? Have you taken time to serve somebody a cup of cold water? Tom Bracken did his part. His name will go down in history as someone who stood the test of time and came out victorious. Goodbye, Tom. We shall see you. To Andrea, to her sons Michael and David, to David, to your wife Kidra and the and the girls, um, to the family and friends that are gathered here, uh, I join you today in sadness at the passing of our husband, father, cousin, uh, and friend. Um, I'm going to read something that I know Tommy believed. Psalm 62, 1. My soul finds rest in God alone. He alone is my rock and my salvation. His is my fortress. And I know Tommy believed this. I'm Charles Bracken. I'm one of Tommy's first cousins, uh, along with my sister Kathy Bracken Williams. Um, we express our sincere condolences and share in your loss. Uh, Tommy was the oldest of us cousins. Um, I always looked up to him. Um, he is the son of Thomas Bracken, the brother of my father, Oakley Bracken. And he and Oakley are sons of Oliver Bracken. And Oliver Bracken was the son of Joe Bracken, who came across from North Carolina, as we understand it, married a local Indian midwife. And uh, from there, they had a number of young who come down to us today. Um, a couple of things I know that Tommy carried with him all his life as part of that rich heritage of African culture and American Indian culture is um, he was comfortable in any situation. He was comfortable being stationed in Alaska. He was comfortable making his way in LA after Alaska, after he left the military. Um, and he carried with him a passion for bettering himself and his family. And he also carried with him a passion for learning new things and having something to believe in. And that belief was centered in God. Uh, a family man um, and a man who loved to storytell. In fact, one of the things that his father, Tommy, gave to Tommy and my father, Oakley, gave to me is we're all storytellers. We teach by telling stories. We learn from stories. We share stories to pass on what we believe. So if you know and love Tommy, you know he had many stories. And he, like his father and my father, um, they could hold you spellbound with their stories. And they could make a strong and good argument. Um, I love and miss him. Uh, I remember when he had his Corvair and came to my house in Saginaw. Um, I remember when he had a 55 or 56 Chevrolet and came up in the driveway. And I didn't know I had cousins that were that cool. Uh, so 
he's so loved by by all of us. Um, I want to say to the family and friends something that you already know is uh, we'll all be together again someday by the grace of God. And Tommy lived for that, and he embraced the Lord in his life. And so on behalf of myself and my sister Kathy and for my two children, Mecky Bracken, Craig, and Joseph Oliver Bracken, and their cho- their spouses and their children, um, we say to the family and to all of you, you have our deepest condolences. We wish you peace and comfort during this time of loss. We love you all very much, and we look forward to our being able to be together even yet next year as we come out of this terrible time in, in uh, our country's history. And we look forward, by the grace of God, like Tommy, to be together forever in God's kingdom. God bless. So, as you all know, we're here to talk about my dad, my brother Mike's dad, the uh, husband of Michelle, Thomas Bracken. Well, you know, you guys have heard a lot about him, and I know most of you know a lot about him. I'm going to tell you a couple things from my side. Uh, You know, he was my Black Panther. He saved me from giant beehives, from falling in uh, icy waters, uh, you know, from anything you can say. Um, We used to go on amazing trips in the big green machine, as my brother would call it, uh, which was... uh, a converted bread truck so we actually would sleep where the bread used to be um, um, when we would go on our trips Um, he was the only person who would take me for miles and miles to the valley and places like that for my fencing competitions and you know really loved the fact that I was doing something unique Uh, he also took me to my entrepreneurship academy uh, events which were in um, uh, Irvine uh, and would take me there every Saturday without fail uh, 8 in the morning and wait out there with nothing to do uh, until I was done two hours later um, dad told me I could do anything and so I did started uh, my company uh, you know because he said hey don't be um, don't feel that you're uh, can be held back by anything uh you know uh he gave uh, my brother and i an amazing foundation that uh hopefully has led us to be the um wonderful men that you see before you today uh my brother uh you know has done such amazing things in his life uh all because of the foundation that my dad gave him and hopefully i've been doing the same uh you know, he was very uh, loving, um, though stern. Um, uh, his grandkids would always come by and would say, hey, Papa, hi, Papa. They call him Papa, um, you know, and would hang out with him. And uh, they usually were the only three that could get a smile out of him. Uh, so, you know, he'd say something, they'd say something, and they'd say, but did you hear me? And he'd uh, give a little grunt and a smile and and you know say uh, how you doing and um you know uh it was great father to have so thank you guys all for being on this uh with us thank you first of all i just want to thank everybody the friends family church members who've come together to celebrate with us Hearing it, hearing your words, um, brought back some wonderful memories. Um, and and, and then in my dad's, I got my brother for because that was crazy, right? That was amazing. But um, and my dad, you know, my dad, um, he he talked with you, he hugged you, he had church with you, he prayed with you, he played games with you, he had fun, like. Like he would never have that opportunity again. Like, like this was so special that he appreciated every moment that he thanked God for every moment that he had with, with us. And um, 
hey, maybe if we didn't understand that before, we understand we're now after this year, after losing him, after losing everything that we've lost. Um, it's lessons that somehow he knew all along, and he, and he tried to teach that to us. Um, been blessed to have as my father, um, and and I think I think we've been able to, as a family, carry out his dream for the family to be that strong unit together. Um, he always said that you know from the moment he made up the steps to only look over the view of the house. He always said that this was his home, this was where he was going to live, this was where he was going to die, and nobody was going to take him out anything. And we helped him achieve that. We helped him to live out that mission. And if we did, again, if we didn't understand um, how important it was before, if I didn't understand how important it was before, this year taught us that, hey, you don't want to let anybody go. You don't want to let let anybody go behind the doors. You want to keep them where they want to be at home, man. We fought for that for 10 years and, and we achieved that. We got to say, hey, we got to say goodbye to him as a family where he wanted to be. Um, I, the other day we were just talking, I was laughing about how he would, um, their Bible study, he would have the, have the, everybody, sing the songs because songs are songs. So he was like, okay, everybody turn to um, the psalm and everybody starts singing. And uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I sound I want. And you know, if he wasn't impressed by the enthusiasm of your singing, he would say, all right, y'all, you know, heaven is nothing but people from around the world singing praises to the Lord. And they'll be singing in different pitches and different keys and different languages. And there'll be a different noise unto the Lord. And if you expect to be going to heaven and start practicing now, so sing. And people would start singing hey, loud and strong and, and laughing and joyfully. And right now he's, he's singing in heaven. He's hey, bringing everybody together to sing in heaven. And I say, oh, he's a off key. My mom says that in heaven, my dad has perfect pitch. And my mama was always crying. So, hey, love you, dad. Hey, can't wait to see you. Amen. Amen. Hello. And thank you for being with us here on Zoom, something that we never had heard of until a few months ago. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In all things give thanks. In all things. Not necessarily for all things. It, and even in the passing of my husband of 54 years, I have much to be thankful for. I am thankful for the blessing of those 54 years. Sometimes it seems like only yesterday that we the two kids in our 20s took our marriage vows and then in a blink of an eye became the old people in our 70s and 80s. Tommy and I have always been thankful for our sons, Michael and David. We enjoyed raising them and doing things with them. I remember the big road trips, like the one we took to Lava, Bed, Lava, Lava Beds National Park and walked down into the lava caves where the temperature was freezing. And this was in the hot summertime. David fell into an icy, an icy pool of water and Tommy, who was not happy about being underground, wasted no time grabbing him up and taking him as fast as he could back up to the sunshine, leaving Michael and me to finish the tour. And I remember playing trivia games with the extended family and having so much fun. I am especially proud and thankful 
to Michael and David for the care they gave to Tommy after his stroke, never missing a day at the hospital, talking to all the nurses and the doctors, buying all of the things that he needed so that we could keep him at home. Tommy faced a number of health challenges in his life. These seemed only to boast, bolster his faith. After the stroke, Tommy developed a form of dementia that made him not want to leave the house. But I am happy to say he did attend David and Kedra's wedding, and he did attend my 71st birthday party. The Apostle Paul speaks in 2 Corinthians 5, 8 of being absent from the body, being present with the Lord. Tommy has left his body, and because I'm sure that he is present with the Lord, I'm thankful. As Tommy always said, read your Bible from cover to cover. The knowledge of the truth will set you free. Thank you. We now have Aria Bracken with acknowledgments from the family. The Bracken family would like to thank you for your kindness, gifts, and prayers. We love you, Papa. Bye. We now have poetry reading. One from Leah Bracken, a poem written by Leah Bracken, and another from Judy Robinson with a poem from written by Michelle Bracken. Papa was the kind of person who cared for others more than others cared for him. Papa is an angel. Papa is with the Lord. Papa was and is loved. Good afternoon again. This next poem was written by Michelle Andrea for her church member, Connie Gomes, when she announced to the church that her husband, Walter, had made his transition. Tommy liked the poem, saying that it, it covered everything. It seems so very appropriate to present the same poem on this occasion, entitled Transitions by Michelle Andrea Bracken. He has made his transition, I heard his loved ones say, in the confident assurance that they'd meet again one day. He has made his transition to that happy home abroad. Now he's absent from the body, so he's present with the Lord. Jesus made his transition, resurrected to ascend, where he waits beside the Father for our broken hearts to mend. When we all make our transition where our blessed Lord shall reign, we'll be with our friends and loved ones. No more sickness, no more pain. We will praise his name forever in that happy home abroad when we all make our transitions to be present with the Lord. Thank you. We now have Reverend Glenn L. Jones, who will do the eulogy for today. At this time, we will share some words of comfort, some refer to it as the eulogy, and I'll say words of comfort. Out of the book of the Revelation, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, we find these words, and this is John the Revelator penning these words, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, 
for their good deeds follow them. Gracious God, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Thank you for being our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Physical death is the avenue of a glorious reunion between believers and our Lord. It is a time of great happiness. Earthly fears, persecutions, and labor will end. No more sickness, no more disease, no more heartache. For the scripture we just read says those who die in Christ are blessed. They are well off. They are fortunate. They are absent from the body. And they are present with the Lord. I'm reminded of John in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1, 2, 2 and 3, where Jesus is recorded as having said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So those who die in Christ are blessed. And then those who die in Christ, according to the scripture, says they enter rest. Yes, they rest from their hard work, their labor. Hebrews 4, 9 through 11 says, There still remains for God's people a rest, like God's resting on the seventh day. For whosoever receives that rest, which God promised, will rest from his own work, just as God rested from his. Let us then do our best to receive that rest so that no one of us will fail as they did because of their lack of faith. We thank God that the years that God gave Tom to us, that he labored, he worked, he gave time to the military, he worked in management, an old Pacific Bell that now is AT&T. He loved his family. He took care of his family. And so now he is at rest from all of his labor. Oh, I'm thinking about the Sunday school class that he taught, Bible studies, all that he did to glorify God, that drew him closer to his God, and that helped those who, were, who attended his classes, who sat under his tutelage, sat under his instruction. And so now he has entered rest from all of that. And even though from his physical labor and jobs that he had, he, he retired early, and because of health conditions, but the Lord allowed him to still be a blessing. We thank God for Andrea and, and for Michael and David as they took care of their, her husband and their dad. And during those, I think maybe around 10 years or so, that he suffered from physical ailments. They were right there until the very end. And God honors faithfulness. And so now that the Lord has said, okay, Tom, it's time for you to come home. He has entered rest, rest from his labors. And then the scripture says, those who die in Christ leave a legacy which follows them through life and into eternity. There's a song we sing, only what you do for Christ will last. 
You can build great cathedrals, large or small, skyscrapers, grand and tall. You may conquer all your failures of the past, but only what you do for Christ will last. And so the legacy that Brother Tom leaves behind of his serious, committed relationship to God. And as he taught others and instructed others, those instructions linger now in the minds of not only family, but friends, other parishioners, a great legacy. Oh, he was stern, and strict, and a disciplinarian, but, but he loved people. He loved his God, and God's love flowed through him. If you got to know him, you realize that he may uh, engage you in conversation and in debate, and you might think that he didn't care about you, but it it had nothing to do. He, when the debate was over, uh, he was through with that and, and continued to love you. He was a great man. His legacy, he leaves behind. And so I know that Michael and David have quite a bit to reflect on their lives with their dad caregivers, other relatives and friends. And so let us continue to live our lives so that when our time comes, because the word says it is once appointed unto mankind to die, and after that, the judgment. And I'm sure, and I believe, that Tom has heard the Lord say, well done, Thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you now again for the life of your servant, your son, Tom Bracken. And now that he has entered rest and he leaves a legacy, he's blessed. And I pray that you would energize the family as a Look forward to finishing the, your purpose for their lives. That they can do so with joy. Reflecting upon precious memories with, with Tom. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. My mother, hey, <coughs> Bernard Coleman, that's my mother, the hey. Without her and the things she put into me, I couldn't do anything. She started out. I want to thank Michael and David. No father could ever be more proud of their sons than Michael and David. And I, also, I also especially want to thank David because he designed the cards that you have. For David and myself, for the, the <laughs> he's the one that designed it. Hopefully, you'll be able to work for the telephone company and design your retirement when you get <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, There's only one angel in my life. She's sitting right here. have available for anyone who would like it physical copies of the obituary if you would like a copy please email me at david at streetelements.com we also would love for you all to put your favorite memories of thomas on our memory board which can be found in the links that you uh, were given to start this as well as please feel free 
to visit his Bible reading website, which the links is also where you found the link to join us today. That is a website that was built by Dad that allows you to read the Bible over the course of a year. It also gives you amazing questions and insights into the Bible, and he was very proud of that legacy. The family would like to thank you for spending your afternoon with us remembering the life of Thomas Bracken. This now concludes our service, but we will be staying on Zoom if you would like to give us some words of encouragement, some acknowledgments, uh, some heartfelt gestures, or anything else. If you are watching us on another service like YouTube, please join us on our Zoom link where you are able to talk with my mother and the rest of the family. Thank you. God. I know you, Papa. This is Arvis Jones, and I just want to say to Andrea that uh, I was one of the musicians at St. Paul's and sang in the choir with Andrea. But as I watched you take care of your husband, um, and we talked about grief and loss, I must say that you did an outstanding job to the end. I just hope I have somebody like you when it's my time to make my transition because you are a wonderful wife. Love you. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. This is Reverend Tony Robinson and I am uh, one of the family members that uh, Tommy and I used to have our our head-to-head uh, -head debates about the word. Now, I'm very strong in the word, and so uh, he would challenge me and force me to go back and get the word out and read it again. And so uh, the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, and I certainly have been sharpened by Tommy. And uh, we used to have some, some big uh, um, uh, verbal brawls over the word, but it, it caused me to, to grow in my relationship with the Lord and, and in, in knowing the word. So, Tommy, thank you for that. Thank you for all that you meant to all of us. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. Hi, Andrea, Andrea. Just a few words I want to say to you. Just an honor to uh, participate uh, small in a sm very small way in the homegoing services of Tommy. Uh, you know, we love you and we'll continue to pray for you and, and be with you during your time of need. Uh, thanks so much and, and we love you so much. Take care. Thank you, Judy. And thank you for the beautiful voice that thank you for adding to Amen. our service. Andrea. Uh, this is Reverend Catherine Hughes, and I want to say to you and to the family and to friends uh, that I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity to serve St. Paul's at the same time that Tommy was uh, involved. I served St. Paul's for six months as temporary pastor, and... Are you not hearing me? Hearing you. <laughs> yes. Am I on? We can hear you. Okay. And yes, you are. I was also grateful to serve um, for 10 years as the third Sunday preacher. And I knew that when it was my turn to preach, uh, and Tom would be there that I'd better be on my P's and Q's <laughs> because he'd be there to critique everything. 
we had a great relationship. And sometimes after the service, uh, we would stand in the parking lot uh, for a long time talking about the, the service and the word. He loved the word, the living word, Jesus Christ, as well as the written word. And he wanted everybody uh, to study God's word and to really come to have a relationship with God, not just attend church services, uh, not just um, be a part of the choir or be an elder or a deacon, but he wanted, he wanted us to have a real relationship, relationship with God, with God. Yeah. Uh, where we communicated with God from time to time through prayer and through the word. He was such a wonderful man. I don't think I've known anybody else who, who loved the word as much as, as Tom did. And he was not intimidated by anybody. And if mm. he disagreed with you, he let you know in a loving way, and he was willing to share the disagreement and <laughs> have you rethink, as someone else said, uh, rethink the part of scripture that you disagreed on. Sometimes you would agree with him, sometimes you would not. Uh, but the thing that I loved about him, he, accept, he accepted you, uh, even if you disagreed with him. A true man of God who loved his family and also loved the Lord. So I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to live at the same time that Tom lived and to be touched by him. And I just believe that if he were able to speak now, he would say, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. I and now there is in store for me a crown, a crown that the righteous judge will award me on that day. But the good thing about it is not only will he award it to Tom, but he will award that crown to all who long for his appearing. So Andrea and David and Michael and the entire family I know you know that you were loved by your father, by your husband. And I just want you to know that I love each of you. And David, you know, you've, he has helped me so much since I moved. You all don't know this, but I love you much. I'm here for you, uh, Andrea, if you need me. And let's stay in touch. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hughes. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Can I just speak? Can I just speak? Congratulations to the family. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. I'm, I was just so honored to be involved in the closure of Tommy. And um, I thought I knew him, but now I really know him. And I must say that um, I'm encouraged by his Bible app that he developed. And I was telling my husband every year, that's one of my um, New Year's resolutions is to read the Bible from front to back. But I must say that I get weary in it and I get trapped in it and I start going to my favorite passages. But I am thoroughly encouraged to make that my goal this year and to use Tommy's app. And thank you for sharing his life and your, you all's life with us in the neighborhood. I believe I have gained a friendship with you, yes. uh, Michelle, and I'm hoping that we will continue to do life. We got a Coco's uh, Connect when yes. um, this pandemic is over. But I also want to encourage you because I was blessed while you were taking care of Tommy. You not only took care of Tommy, but you started a caregiving ministry. And that yeah. is a very much needed ministry. And Amen. my prayer is that you will continue to throw your time and your talents and your heart in that. Because so many caregivers don't have really anyone to, to support them, to be a resource, to be an ear, to hear. Yeah. And I'm hoping that you will 
be give that the honorary name of Tommy Bracken Caregiving Ministry. I think that that would be another legacy that he would be proud of that uh, he has left you with. So stay the course, my dear. Be encouraged, the entire family. I've enjoyed watching you take care of your ki grandchildren while taking care of Tommy, and it brought such joy into the home. And thank God for your humble sons that are continually just um, supporting you and being there and loving you. So we'll be doing life. We continue on. It doesn't end. Yes. Thank you so much. And I'm going to read through the, Bi through the Bible again. We'll have to get into some discussions about it. Okay, let's make that a plan. <laughs> okay. Well, Mrs. Brackens, I, I have to say that um, this was a very, very awe-inspiring service. Um, David, Michael, you guys did a wonderful job. I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank God for Mr. Bracken's life. And we know exactly where he is because he's a son of God and he, he lived that while he was here. And he's in heaven with the, at the Lord's feet rejoicing. We thank God for his life. May the good Lord continue to strengthen you guys going forward. In Jesus' name. I, I think we have to fondly give him the name of our honorary neighborhood preacher because that's what I thought about and when we were living. I said, this man is not afraid to talk about the Lord, carry his Bible, and invite us to Bible studies and um, to church with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he will always be loved in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Michelle. Yes. Can you guys Hi, it's Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hi. I, I, I love you guys. I'm, um, just for those who don't know, I'm one of your caregivers. And, yeah. and let me tell you, it's been, it's been a nice, challenging, loving <laughs> road. Let me tell you. I love you guys so much. I love you, Dave, Michael. Yeah. Um, man, you guys have brought me closer to God, you know, I'm already a God-fearing man, but taking care of Tommy and just loving you guys, it's been a blessing, you know? Everybody is not a caregiver. Caregiving is not the easiest thing in the world. You have to be you have to touched by the Lord to, to, prov to provide a service like I did. And I became close to you guys. You know, I'm, I'm fighting back tears right now. I'm very sensitive man. <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a gentle giant, as you guys know. I love yeah. you guys so much. This was, this was a beautiful service. Um, and I, words can express how, how grateful I am just to take care of Tommy and yourselves. And Michelle, man, Michael, Dave, you guys did an awesome job in taking care of Tommy and nurses and and caregivers and and just everything. Man, it was it was it was tough. But you know what? He's in a better place. And <laughs> and and that's that, you know. I want to give a special shout out to Kath, Reverend Catherine Hughes because it's a small world. She was also there for my mom when she passed. <laughs> over 12 years ago. So when she came up on Zoom, I was like, is that Reverend Hughes? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a small world. But yeah. guys, I, I love you, Michelle, and you know I do. I miss cooking for you guys, and I'm here for you forever. I'm here for you, Dave, Michael. You guys are my people, man. And um, your, your father will be forever loved and missed from my family to yours. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you for all the help that you gave us and helped us to keep Tommy in the home. Ma'am. Hello, Brandon family. Auntie. Oh, Sorry. did you want to go, Ms. Lauren? You can go. If you don't mind. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, Auntie Andrea and David and Michael and my babies and Kedra, we just wanted to say um, we love you guys and so sorry for this uh, loss. I remember all the Thanksgivings and Christmases we would spend with all of you. And um, I think my favorite memory is us all playing taboo and <laughs> um, getting extra loud with each other and, and debating over things and 
just having fun together. And I, I miss his laugh. I miss his smile. I miss the, the storytelling time. So um, I, we're very happy that we were able to just tune in in between work. Um, but Candace wanted to say something really quick. Um, we just, it's unbelievable that somebody this, you know, you don't think about people, you losing people this close to you. So um, this was a hard one to swallow. Um, we're going to miss seeing him at every, you know, we've been missing seeing him thus far, but to know that he won't be able to come back anymore, but he'll be here in spirit. And we're just so grateful to God that we have the relationship with him that we will see him again. So we're so excited that um, you're, you guys are here to carry on his legacy. It's insane to us how much David and Michael look like their dad. Yes. yes. And then Aria and Leah they, and Elijah, they look like grandpa is crazy. So um, <laughs> we're just so blessed to have you as part of our family and be part of your family, and we love you guys. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Hello, Bracken family. We're sending you guys love and prayers from Atlanta. Hi. Um, hey, yeah. everybody. Hey. It's, been, it's been years since I've been, well, it has been years. It's been years since I've been home with the family, and it's heartbreaking because Mr. Bracken never got a chance to meet my baby when I first met Mr. Brackett, he knew me before I was even born. And <laughs> when I was right. able to actually converse with him, he was always a God-fearing and God-loving man. And he always expressed love to me, always opened his arms to me and welcomed me in his home like a bonus son. So we're sending our prayer and love to you guys. We love you guys. Michael, David. We love you too. We love you, man. All right. Boom. Thank you. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Hi, this is Renee. Hi, Renee. I'm his cousin. Uh, I just wanted to say that I really am so proud of you and of David and Michael and the way they have taken care of you, Andrea, and the yeah. way they took care of their dad. I can remember, first of all, you would always put him first. I can remember us trying to get together to have a girlfriend's out yeah. even, you would always have to check with David or Michael to see if one of them would be available to allow you to have some time off. And they were always so willing and always looking out for your health and trying to give you a break. And yeah. I just think that was a blessing and, and a credit to, to who Tommy was and how, how you both brought them up and what they felt was important in their life. And there's so many families don't, that don't have that closeness. And I just, it just makes me so um, happy and one, wonderful that that's what, what bringing people up in, in, in the love of God does. It, it just changes your whole life and it makes your whole life better. So I just wanted to, to say to uh, Michael and David that you have done just such a wonderful job with taking care of both your mom and your dad during this time. And during the time that he's been ill, you've always been there to support her and to be available. And I just think that's wonderful. Um, David, I didn't know you had the talent since he, he retired when you made out the program. You've, you've always had this talent. This program was, <laughs> was wonderfully put together. Yes. You guys did just such it a was. great job. And um, you're to be commended. Yes. Um, yeah. So I love you guys. You know, I'm always here for you and I pray for you and call me whenever you need me, Andrea. Thank you, Renee. And thank you for the beautiful harp playing. Amen. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. That's the least I could do. I was so, I was so honored when you wanted to, to put it on the program. <laughs> well, it was beautiful. Love you guys. Love, love you. you. My name is Freeman McFadden. And I'm in, uh, out in the Bay Area, in San Francisco, Oakland area. And uh, yeah. I just want to say a few words to Mrs. Bracken and David in the, in the family, you know, that uh, I love you, you know, and I wish I had for, hadn't forgotten that uh, Mr. Bracken was into the Bible so much because I'm part of what they call the Brothers to Brothers Bible study group, and we meet once a week. And we go all through the Bible. 
you know, and he would have been a, a, a great addition uh, to the 60 members that we have that are going through the Bible. So yeah. I love you, and I know you're going to miss your, your dad and your husband, and, and bless you. And I know there was a lot of spirit from all the people that, that uh, came into Zoom and spoke to you. So bless you. That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Andrea. This is uh, Dennis Corbin. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, my condolences uh, on the loss of uh, Mr. Bracken. I talked to Michael earlier. And I shared with him that I felt that it was a blessing and an honor to have known Mr. Bracken, a very unique individual. You couldn't help but love him. Regardless of what happened, you couldn't help but love him. And I was really fortunate that I got a chance to know him. And at least he got a chance to know my son. My son's, of course, 15 now, and he doesn't remember him. But I'm glad that Mr. Bracken got a chance to get to know him. Yeah. So, um on behalf of my family to yours, you, Michael, and David, uh, my condolences, and uh, Mr. Bracken will truly be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. You're welcome. Hello, Andrea. This is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Thank you so much for in inviting me. Um, yeah, I think I'm doing this correctly. Uh, I know I'm not used to Zoom, <laughs> but um, the service was beautiful. Yeah, you did a fantastic job of putting this together. Yes, and, yes. Um, I didn't know Tommy as well as some of you did. Um, I met him late after he and Andrea uh, uh, got married. And I was talking to Clarice this morning. I said, when does she get married? <laughs> what year did she get married? And Andre and I go back to elementary school. Yes. And over the years, we lost touch. We get in touch. And, but always remain friends. And I love you to death. Uh, you. One third of the three musketeers. And I'm... Um, <laughs> It was truly sad to hear that Tommy had passed when Clarice called me. But mm -hmm. I wish you all the love. And, you know, if you need anything, you know, I'm just down the freeway around the corner. You know, mm -hmm. give me a call. And God bless you for eight years taking care of, of, of your husband. And uh, it just puts me in the mind of my husband when, when he passed. And, but unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to finish what I was attempting to do. He passed away while I was in making those arrangements. But a beautiful service. So you and uh, Michael and um, David, Kedra and the grand ones take care. And I love you. Thank you, Barbara. We love you. Yes. Thank you. I would also like to thank Stephen Burr, who, who helped me so much to put together the program. He was a great help putting together the program and is actually the person who's letting you guys in right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Renee. Well, since you mentioned my name, I just wanted to say to Andrea, uh, the condolences <laughs> from the Burr family. Um, and I've known Tommy my entire life, uh, just the, the love and the family neighbor uh, relationship that you guys nurtured and David and Michael and all the youth and Genesis at St. Paul's is just memorable uh, growing up. Uh, and, and Tom had a direct impact on my life because uh, one Sunday after church, him, Milesetta Cole and Alfreda Thomas were sitting around and Katie Fern, who was a member at the time, um, had this fellowship and they had an empty spot and they sat around and they talked about who could, this fellowship was about to go unused because someone had dropped out after a first, the first semester. And they, I wasn't there that Sunday, but they mentioned my name and they got me in contact with Katie Fern. And mm -hmm. I ended up going into that fellowship and I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 25 years. It's that fellowship that allowed me to meet my wife, LaDonna, 
So um, Tommy has really had a huge impact on my life. So, uh, and just the example that he said as being a God fearing man uh, is definitely something that I've taken with me. So uh, much love to you and, and the, the life that you and he nurtured for David and Michael and for all us, uh, your, your uh, other sibling, uh, uh, kids that you really took in. So thank you so much. Hey, thank, thank you, you Steve, Steven. for everything. Man. Thank you for everything. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I hear you. Okay, this is Joyce Dean. This is hi. my first hi, my first Zoom memorial service, and it was beautiful. Very, very lovely. You guys did a great job. I really appreciate it, and you have my deepest sympathy. I, I can't wait until we have a Compton Zoom meeting and get together and talk. Yes, we have. I just wanted to tell you that um, that you're in my prayers and in my thoughts. And um, I, I just wish the best for you for the future. And God bless you guys for the job that you did taking care of your husband. That was just such a beautiful thing. Just an expression of love. And I didn't know the first time you met him, he, you met him, he uh, proposed. <laughs> that was funny. I really enjoyed the pictures. I enjoyed everything. It was just a beautiful service. But anyway, I can't wait till we get together. Thanks for inviting me and letting me know about this. Yes. God, Thank bless, you. You. God bless you. God bless you. Well, Justine, we can talk some more. <laughs> well, Bracken family, this is the Catch family wanting to just express our appreciation for being with you guys. It was a lovely service. We enjoyed every minute of it, and we just feel like we were, we are honored to have the Bracken family as a part of St. Paul's and our life together for the past 40, 40 some odd years. And so we just wanted to express our appreciation for being a part of your family and for you being a part of the St. Paul's family and for us all having an opportunity to share in God's work uh, together and at St. Paul's. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. And thank you, Jonathan, for your kind words. Well, thank you so much. I was, I was honored to be asked to be part of the service. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Anybody up next? Hello. 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 Can you see me, Andrea? Yes, yeah. I see you. Oh, I wasn't sure if I was doing this right. I had trouble. But I just wanted to say a few words that we're all going to remember, Tommy, and especially during our Bible study when we would come to your house. We had a good time learning about the Lord. And I also want to mention that um, the choir, well, the main four, you know who we were. You were one of them. We loved it at the end of service when Tommy got up to dance. This little light of mine. <laughs> It was one of his favorite songs, and he danced every time we sang it. So we'll, we'll miss that, but we want to let you know that we love you and that we care for your family. And for David, I remember the first time you picked up, you all picked up Chaka. They had one of their uh, meeting, one of their things on Sunday evening for the uh, altar boys. And you all would <laughs> Driving down, Chaka said you all were driving down that freeway so fast. <laughs> and I thank you for all that you did for the young people at that time. So God bless you all. And I hope to see you soon once this thing is over that we're going through. But yeah. I know that we love you all. I love your kids. And you all, 
Andrea, you didn't have anything to do with the birth of the boys because they don't they look like Tommy. Every <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the image of him. So God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Love that's, you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. The Bracken family has always been just a very special family. Uh, it's Merle Luck speaking. And I'm so appreciative of the gifts that each one of the Brackens brought, not only to St. Paul's, but to their friends. Andrea with her voice in the choir and her ministry of caregiving. Michael, mm -hmm. who brought empathy and caring to the deacons. And then David, who has the patience of Job, I believe, he would mm -hmm. even with those of us who are still struggling with uh, Computer 101. <laughs> it was very, very helpful to, for us. And of course, Tom, who had explanations for everything, shared with his church and shared with his family. So we thank the Brackens for that. Thank you. Thank you, Merle. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Andrea? Yes, Pastor. I want you to know that as I shared with you once Tom made his transition that God honors faithfulness and you have been a faithful companion to your husband. You honored your marriage vows for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, to love and to cherish, uh, to death do you part in sickness and in health. And you were there to the very end. And God honors that. Amen. And Tommy certainly was the great recipient of your unconditional, unfailing love. And for Michael and David to be by your side, and you all worked as a team along with uh, the brother who was a caregiver uh, is just a wonderful, wonderful legacy that's uh, that's being left. And um, I'm just uh, I've I've sat here and watched and listened to all of the uh, the remarks, uh, the tributes that have been given, and um, and the fact that you're still here means that God's purpose for your life is not done yet, and so. <laughs> you must continue to serve and if you have to take a little break that's understandable <laughs> but uh, don't be gone too long uh, come on because we have work to do this, this pandemic hopefully will be over soon and yeah. we can continue and uh, resume our ministries and uh, uh, David you did a marvelous job in putting this together yes, yes. Really, and I thank you for your help, uh, help with the, the Zoom. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new technology that I think all of us need to jump in there, uh, feet first, jump in the in the deep water and, and learn this so that because I don't, it's not going to go away. I think it's it's an added um, vehicle and an avenue for communication. So when we do go back into the sanctuary for worship, uh, we're going to need to carry this along with us because we need to try to still minister to uh, people like uh, Diane Williams and um, yeah. Joan West and those who are still part of us but can't get into the service. And, yeah. uh, and so we look forward to expanding our uh, means of communication. Um, but I thought it was a beautiful service, and uh, your words were very fine. I didn't, I didn't realize you said no the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you said yes a few months later. <laughs> so am I. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Pastor, thank you so much for your uh, preaching the, eu the eulogy. We mm. appreciate your your words uh we appreciate you well 
To God be the glory, we all family. <laughs> Amen. I'm just a new kid on the block. <laughs> all right. Jenny, you gonna say something else to us? Oh, no, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there's any noise that if someone makes any noise, it sits with us here. But they don't necessarily really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um if we have anyone else, uh feel free to come out. Otherwise, we will say thank you all for coming out. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm like waving my hand. Good night. <laughs> Marvelous job, David, Andrea, awesome job, Dave. everyone. Thank you, all the contributors. Michael. Marvelous job. Thank you so much. Steve, yeah. Thanks, David. We really appreciate what you did, buddy. So great to hear you today. You and Michael both. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, good night, family. This is Charles. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night to you. At all. I'll be in touch, Andrea. Okay. Thank you, Judy. All righty. Love Dave. you. David, are you still there? I am. I got my printer working. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's, he's been hours with me. He's so patient. He really is. <laughs> well, thank you guys. And thank you all for staying on and hanging out with us. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Zoom. When, when church resumes. And until then, we'll see you on Zoom. <laughs> okay. Bye. This great, is the Lord. Great uh, service. I love great it. Service, great service, Great service, guys. We loved it. Bye-bye. It was Bye. great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.